This is Michael Woodbridge coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin at the Conserving the Future Conference. After a commanding speech this morning, we got the chance to sit down with Admiral Fat Allen. You touched on delivering the message in your speech today. Can you tell us more about engaging the public and making your message relevant? Well, first of all, I think uh, the message coming out of this conference is terrific. I think there's been a lot of work done already in some of the listening sessions and some of the workshops that have been held. Uh, you focus in where you've got about a 99% product, and I think uh, what you coming out of here, you're going to need a cause for action and kind of keep everybody, you know, lined up in the same direction and going that way. Uh, to do that, you're going to have to talk with folks, and we operate in a much different media environment than we did. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago with the 7 by 24 hour news cycle, social media, uh, the way that people can uh, connect with each other and they can aggregate, aggregate to produce behaviors without physically being in each other's presence. And I think we need to understand that and how we're going to communicate and talk not only with the public but with the press and with our partners and the other people that we're working with and it just requires a, a little change in mindset. And frankly folks in my generation don't understand it that well. I have more of a problem explaining what's going on in terms of media and what I think we need to do to my peers than I do with uh, folks that are just coming into government. They pretty much get it because they grew up in a, in a digital world. Uh, some of the senior leaders right now are not really that comfortable in that type of environment, but the fact of the matter is, as I told the folks this morning, it, it's, it's the equivalent of sociological climate change, and we're just going to have to get used to it because it's there and we have to deal with it. In uh, 2007, in my second year as Commandant, we made a deliberate effort to get involved in social media. Uh, not only to demonstrate uh, to our, the young folks in the Coast Guard that we're savvy with it, but we needed to learn more about it ourselves. So I originally started with a Facebook account, and then we established a blog, and then we went to Twitter, uh, and then we established a Flickr site to uh, upload all the photos to so the public would have access to it, try to create uh, a greater transparency. And frankly, uh, I think you have to do that because young people expect that, that we're going to communicate that way. But as I said earlier, the largest challenge in dealing with that were more my peers and the junior folks because they have a hard time adapting to that. And I've had this conversation with a lot of different uh, organizations and people. Uh, we're never going to have another large complex issue or an event or a program in this country's history, whether it's a, a disaster or a complicated operating program in an agency that's not going to involve public participation. And the public will participate because there's no barrier to entry. And if you don't take that into account in planning your programs and what you're going to do, you're ultimately going to fail because they will fill the space with opinions about what you're doing. If you're not actively out there explaining what's happening, you're ultimately going to create a gap or a credibility problem. So I think anybody that's going to be dealing with organizational change and trying to be more effective in a resource-constrained world is necessarily going to have to deal with these folks in the environment they operate in.